Hey everyone, it's Jay with Journey Vision, and today we're going to talk about solar systems for your minivan camper. So when I first built my van four years ago, I decided to go with a built-in integrated solar system that ended up being pretty complex to install. I did have a little bit of 12 volt knowledge when I started that project, it definitely helped, but there was still a good bit of learning curve when it came to installing a 12 volt solar system. So the built-in system consists of a 100 watt Renogy solar panel on the roof, that runs down into a CTEC solar charger controller, which also acts as a battery isolator. So that also connects to my alternator. And then from there, it forks off to a fuse block and as well as this uh, 600 watt pure sine wave inverter right here. So for the most part, that system's been doing good. Capacity's been a little bit low. Currently I have a 100 amp hour lead acid battery back there. It's been doing the job, but if I run into a couple bad days of sunshine, storm moves in, clouds, whatever it may be, it can really affect how my solar system performs. So it only takes a couple days before I get into a deficit and I really have to start conserving power. So when I got back on the road again last year, last June, I really thought about adding more solar to my van. I just needed a little bit more power. I decided to go with a separate solar system, which would be this Rock Pals 300 unit and this 50 watt Renogy Eclipse solar panel. These little power stations have really come a long way since I first built my van back in 2016. Back then there wasn't a lot of good options other than maybe a Goal Zero, which was incredibly overpriced. But now we have Jackeries, we have Rock Pals, we have the Blue Eddies. Uh, there's a lot of other great options as well. Now I will say I am not going to stand behind this Rock Pals product. I'm just going to get this out of the way. It has a bad fan in it. It squeaks when it charges for a long time. I approached Rock Pal customer service with the issue. It was still under warranty. They ended up ghosting me. So long story short, don't buy Rock Pals. Look at something different. I'm going to do my best to walk you through my built-in solar system. It is pretty complicated. This video is certainly not going to be an instructional video on how to install your solar system, but hopefully it should give you some ideas as far as whether a built-in or one of these plug-and-play solar systems are going to be best for you. Now what I'd like to do is take you on a quick tour of my built-in solar system. I'll show you some of the components and how it's set up. I'll start off by showing my Renogy 100 watt panel. This thing's been great. I don't think they've changed too much over the years. I've had it for about four years now and this 100 watt panel does a pretty good job. I am able to remove it so if you can see underneath there there's some actually some thumb screws holding it to my roof rack and that is how i can take it off if i need to i have an extension cord and i can move it around if i need to collect some more light but for the most part this 100 watt solar panel does a good job just staying on top of the roof here is where the positive and negative solar cables go through the van. I drilled a couple holes and then used grommets and die core to seal it up. I am going to redo this and use this type of housing. Uh, I just think it's a much better solution. This is my sealed lead acid battery. It's about a hundred amp hours. It's been working just enough to keep everything running in the van. So from the solar panel, it intersects here with my CTEC solar controller. Unfortunately, they don't make this anymore. It, it's been great though, because it works as a battery isolator and a solar controller all in one. Here is the input from my alternator, cutoff switch to the battery, positive and negative for the solar panel. Back here, you can see my fuse block, and this is what integrates with the rest of the van. So this powers my 
USB 12 volt ports. It powers my LED lights in the ceiling. It runs my 12 volt fridge. And then I also have plugged in my heater to this fuse block. When I attached my fridge to the fuse block, I essentially just cut this cable and extended it all the way back to the fuse block. It's now that you've seen the install in the rear of the vehicle, here is where the control panel is and all this is connected to the fuse block in the back. So I have these 12 volt port adapters here. You can pick and choose your choice of sockets. I've also powered up my rear vent windows. Love this feature, it's really convenient. Here is the control for my vent line roof vent. And then these are going to control my lights. Here we have the pure sine wave 600 watt inverter. This thing's been great. I've had zero issues with it. You want to get a pure sine wave inverter. It's just going to deliver cleaner power. So here's a closer look at the Rock Pals 300 power station. It has a 300 watt inverter, which has been pretty good. It has about 280 watt hours of capacity. So it's actually a pretty small battery, but it's been working for what I need. It comes with this 12 volt port adapter and this particular charger does great. It has a USB-C quick charge in it. I've never used this power bank before. You can actually buy little adapters and it's almost like a fuse block right here. And then these USB ports, I do use these all the time. Believe it or not, these little lights are kind of neat. And this little power station, it came with this 12 volt cord so I can actually plug it in and charge it off of my alternator while I'm dri driving. I just use the 12 volt port up front, plug this in there, and it will slowly charge it while I'm driving. This particular cord I use quite a bit as well, so if I need to, I can plug it into a 110 socket and charge it quickly. This is the Renogy Monocrystalline Eclipse solar panel I've been using. It's 50 watts, obviously. This thing's been great. It's just enough power to charge up that little Rock Pals power station. It will take about eight to nine hours on a sunny day. So this 30 foot cord for my solar panel came with these two parallel adapters. So I'm going to use these to attach the 50 watt and the 100 watt panel together. However, with these panels in parallel, I can send a lot more power to one of the systems and then at the same time have the flexibility to move these panels around throughout the day as the sun moves. Now that we've walked through both of my solar systems that I have for my van, let me tell you what I think about them, the differences between the two, and maybe give you some ideas as far as what's going to be best for you. Now my built-in system, that was a little complex to install. It took a lot of time to do all the wiring and integrate everything, but it's, it's great to have that convenience of everything built in, everything ready to go when you need it, and it's just a very robust system. I also really like my plug and play system. It's just very simple. It's versatile. I can use it for a lot of different things, and it just does a great job charging my electronics. So which one is best? It's hard to say. For me, I like having both. I think, I think it was a good idea to buy two solar systems. It gives me a little bit of redundancy. It gives me a ton of versatility. And thanks for following the journey and be sure to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought about my built-in system or maybe you have some better ideas or something that can help the viewers of this video. I've really had a fun time making this. It was a lot to walk through and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.